the Tesla plaid hat, the Tesla glasses, the Tesla scarf, the Tesla dog tags, the Tesla shirt, Tesla long sleeve shirt, Tesla leather jacket. This cost me a pretty penny. Wow. Don't have the Tesla pants on today, but I do have the Tesla shorts on underneath. Am I wearing Tesla socks? Oh, I'm wearing white socks, but I got my Tesla plaid shoes. I got my Tesla plaid iPhone case. I'm not sure if I should say congratulations or you need to go see a doctor. I'm not <laughs> sure which. What do you think of the vehicle? Love it. Got my order in. Can't wait to do it. Do you? What, what number are you? I don't even know, but I'm way down there. Way down there? <laughs> Look at this thing. I mean, it's like out of a, a Tron movie or something. If you saw this driving down the road, you'd be like, where are they making the movie? Right. Looks like, yeah, those are handprints. Definitely handprints. Um, not sure what you would need to use to keep this thing clean. I know that Colton is already studying. He's already studying this material. This is like a big giant refrigerator. Welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave, where today I find myself in the meatpacking district here in New York City. Um, got a good spot, got down here early. Got a good spot to park the, the Model X. And what do we have over here, folks? We've got Tesla. Guess what? Today, I'm gonna to see the Cybertruck for the first time. I'm gonna give you my impressions, maybe talk to a few people that are interested in this truck to see what they like about it. So let's get into it. Well, here we are at Tesla and it's just about 9.30, and there's a Model 3 there, and look at that. We've got ourselves the Cybertruck. Oh, yeah. Boy, I'll tell you what, this is my first time seeing it, and I'll be going inside relatively soon here, but boy, oh boy, the thing looks, looks pretty sick. Wow. Check that out. I mean, these statues look pretty weird here. I mean, they're kind of cool, but the only thing weirder than these statues is, look at that right over there. Yes, folks, here we are. Tesla meatpacking distance, distance district. And there is the Cybertruck. I'm gonna see it for the first time today. And I'm pretty sure that if I saw this guy driving that Cybertruck, it wouldn't surprise me in the least. So as I am waiting for 10 a.m. for Tesla to open up, I'm staying warm in my car. You know, not not crazy crowded down here in the meatpacking district here. It's uh, 9.57, Tesla opens up at, at 10 o'clock. And, you know, there's just a few people gathered out there, plenty of parking down here. You just pay by the meter. I'm right out in front and yeah, the, the truck looks uh, pretty amazing, pretty different. I don't know. I, I still, I'm not sure what to think yet, but I want to, I want to talk to some of these folks out here. Maybe once I get inside, to see what their impressions are as well. But a uh, beautiful day here in New York city, uh, right underneath the high line in the meatpacking district. We're going to see the cyber truck for the first time. I'm excited. All right. So it's 10 AM and it looks like they're letting us in. And there aren't that many people here because look, look who's behind me. Nobody. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to see this thing firsthand. Really cool. Uh-oh. There's a jam up. Just let us in. Come on. All right. So after a quick sign in, here I am. And look at that. Boy, this is, you know, my first impressions are, it's super long, especially from the from the B pillar back. It just keeps on going and going. Really, really, of course, angular lines. Boy, you want to be careful. You don't want to run into this thing. <laughs> if you're just walking down the road, you don't want to hit your slam into that. Look at this. Look at this lines here. Wow. Pretty insane. 
Yeah, so as many of you know, uh, Kyle, my son Kyle, was actually at the inaugural event where they unveiled the Cybertruck. That was the one where they broke the glass window on the on the bulletproof glass. And, you know, his first impressions were like, what the heck is this thing? I mean, I actually thought it was a joke when they rolled it out. Um, I no longer think it's a joke, but it is definitely kind of an interesting specimen for sure. I mean, literally, when I when I saw it the first time, I thought it was a, like a paper, paper mache sort of thing that would come out and, and they were not really serious about this vehicle. But here's the thing that's really interesting to me is this has some, some pretty interesting appeal for those that want to be different. The question I have is, and this is similar to what, what Kyle was talking about on the Out of Spec podcast uh, this morning, was you know, what's the utility use of this thing? So are, are, are these really going to be used um, on the job? Or is this really going to be a show truck that, that people are going to get just to be derf and to drive around in their, you know, in their neighborhoods and, and sort of, you know, say, look at me, look at me. And, and I think initially you're going to have a lot of that. Your, um, Kyle, it was interesting. He mentioned that, that they're going to be first time truck buyers and 30 time truck buyers that buy this. This, this is really a, a category that I, I'm just not sure how to, how to, um, how to really explain. Um, I like it better than I thought I would. Um, not that it matters what I like. I mean, they're going to sell every single one of these things. Um, I personally wouldn't really want one of these um, myself. I think it would be fun to make YouTube videos with, and I know that uh, we'd love to you know, get a hold of one of these. So any of the viewers that, that do get one first, please reach out to us and, and let us know if you've got one. Um, please reach out to Kyle because he's the one that's going to want to really drive it but uh, and test it out. But, you know, listen, this is just, it's just different. So uh, you look at the, you look at the, uh, a lot of people are commenting about perhaps the panel gaps or the styling of this car and you know, I mean, look, let's be honest. It, 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 this is a first. It's a, It's been under production for so long. And if there are little niggles here and there in terms of the panel gaps, who really cares? I mean, if you do, don't buy it. But for those of you who don't really care, um, I mean, it'd be nice if everything were perfect. But listen, let's really talk about the utility of this vehicle. You know, how fast is it going to charge? How far is it going to go on a charge? How big is the battery pack going to be? What's the efficiency of this? Now, some of the facts are that it's going to tow up to 11,000 pounds. That's a really good thing. But how efficiently is it going to tow that 11,000 pounds? Um, you know, how are, how are the steering systems going to work? Are they drive by wire or are they not drive by wire? Um, you know, is that something that they're going to be fine tuning uh, as, as time goes on? Um, what's this delivery event going to look like? Now, I know next. This, this coming week on November 30th, they're going to be actually doing the first deliveries of these vehicles. Kyle will be there. So anyway, today is just sort of a first quick look at this vehicle just to get the first impressions. And, and um, you know, what do you think of this thing? Comment below. Look at the size of this windshield wiper. I mean, it's it goes on and on and on. That is just crazy. It's just insane. I mean, I don't know. I'm surprised there's only one on one side. I think that's going to be an issue for anyone who's in the passenger seat. Um, I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, maybe mechanically they'll have some sort of a mechanism that will make it go across and then square off. Hopefully that's the case. It'll be interesting to see how that works. All right. So I've been just talking to some people over here. Met one nice gentleman who actually has a, a cyber truck on order. He thinks he's number one million something. Not sure when he's going to get it, but um, I'll tell you what. I am, I am actually liking this thing. I I think I like it better than I did. The light bar is is very nice. Um, you know what's interesting is there's no paint on this car. It's going to be very interesting to see the wraps that people put on this. But the ability, I know Kyle was talking about how to take care of of this, uh, the metal. I mean, this is, this is all obviously, uh, you know, not pain protection, but metal protection. What, do, what are you really going to do for that? I'm just looking closely here at, 
at sort of it's it's quite dusty, um, which is interesting that they haven't actually dusted it off. Maybe it's just a, a dusty room, but you know I'm gonna. A lot of people are concerned about panel gaps. Well, you know, I mean, come on. Let's look at it. Let's just go ahead and see what these panel gaps look like. That looks pretty straight there, to be honest. These uh, plastic sort of pieces that go around the wheel arch, they don't, they don't look too bad. Um, this at first sight looks like a bad panel gap, but there's actually, it's open up top and then there's a piece of metal there. And to my eye, that looks pretty good. Um, this, this gap right here, just running up there, doesn't look too bad, to be honest, either. Um, you know, the question is, how are these going to be on average? But uh, yeah, this is this is interesting right here. A little bit, a little bit off there. See that rubber piece right in there. And um, you know, I, I really wouldn't worry too much about. For me, I wouldn't worry too much about panel panel, panel gaps. That panel gaps are not gonna. Whether they're there or not there, that's not going to drive the sales of this vehicle. This is what's going to drive the sale of this vehicle. Seems to be a little bit of a scratch right there in the plastic, right in front of the camera on this front left fender. Uh, you know what? It's a truck. And I mentioned this earlier, but these hook caps, these plastic caps, I don't know, man. That, that, that's interesting. There's big gaps there. Wow. Some mud and slush. Probably going to get inside there. I hope they're secured on there really well. <laughs> this uh, brake light signature is actually very very pretty I like that signature they're not letting anyone sit in the car today they're not opening up the tonneau cover so you really can't get a feel in terms of how big this bed really is in the back there I wonder how waterproof this tonneau cover is uh, but boy it's just it's just like a giant wedge going down the road and let's look at this panel gap right here. I don't know guys, that looks really pretty darn good to me. Uh, I don't know, for all you naysayers that say it's got panel gaps all over the place, I don't really see it. Seems real consistent. Wow, these angles just look look amazing so let's let's just kind of go over what this sign says here designed to be the world's toughest truck ultra hard stainless steel exoskeleton shatter resistant glass yeah. well resistant is the key word ultra trough ultra trough ultra tough smc bed up to a 2500 payload pounds 11,000 pounds of towing power and an adaptive air suspension with on-road and off-road drive modes. So there it is in a picture. There it is in person. Wow, that is something else. One question I have is how easily or difficult is it going to be to keep the stainless steel clean. I mean, if you look here, there's a big blotch on the car right there. It looks like, yeah, those are handprints. Definitely handprints. Um, not sure what you would need to use to keep this thing clean. I know that Colton is already studying 
he's already studying this material. This is like a big giant refrigerator. So the question is, what kind of materials are you going to be using to keep this clean? Is it just isopropyl alcohol or or what? But uh, yeah, big, big hand block. That's that is interesting. So let's talk a little bit about these these tires. These are Goodyear tires, obviously custom tires. 265 65 are 20 inch wheels. So you've got a, a very big sidewall and the tread pattern is is quite aggressive on, on this truck. I'm not sure what that means for road noise, but look at the little stones that are getting stuck inside of the tread pattern just because it's so wide. Now, sometimes you get those stones stuck inside the tread pattern and they make noise when you're going down the road. I wonder if that's going to be an issue. I mean, that's an issue for any tire, but it's a, uh, it's a cool looking tire. I'm not sure I'm liking these wheel covers though. It's, uh, it's strange. I wonder what, what it looks like underneath there. If there's a wheel that, that, that maybe you could take those covers off and just, just use it like that. Let's go ahead and take a look at inside the vehicle now as best we can. So I've asked and they, they actually won't open the door, but what's interesting that you can see inside this vehicle is that it, it has a, a squircle type steering wheel, uh, very similar to what is in the Lucid Gravity as well. The, uh, this has black seats with some, they're perforated seats and they have white piping on them, which is nice. Uh, let's see, the headrests do not appear to be adjustable or anything like that. The door panels have white inserts on them, and there's also a white piece going across the dashboard here as well. It appears to be a similar screen to perhaps what's in my Model X, although no, it's, yeah, no, it looks about the same, it looks to be about like the 17 inch screen on the Model X. It's hard to say if that is on a swivel mount or not, uh, let me try and see if I can get in there and see if it is. It's kind of glary. It's hard to see. But uh, I believe it may be on a swivel mount. It appears, yeah, there it looks like there is a cutout for that. And inside the, inside the cabin, you can see that you've got the windshield comes up pretty far. So, but not... X like far, it's uh, it stops, it stops a little bit before, but I bet it looks real nice inside there. And then in the back, you've got a glass roof as well for the back passengers, which uh, which should have a fairly open. I'd be curious to see what kind of headroom there is in this thing because it slopes off pretty aggressively from from the front. I don't think there's any issue with headroom in terms of getting in and out of the vehicle for me, six foot five. And then also this, uh, the B pillar doesn't, to, doesn't seem to be super far forward like it is in the S. So I think it's going to be easy entry and exit. Um, they've got cameras all over the place in this vehicle. You've got obviously similar setups to the Model X's and S's cameras staged all over the place here um, there's a I'm not sure what this little, what this little thing here is some kind of a, a light there I'm not really sure I'm gonna ask one of the guys what that is and there's one over here as well on the B pillar one little design maybe adjustment that will need to be made here is on this rear trunk lid, you can see that um, it's overhanging a little bit. That's probably just a minor, minor display, but overall, this thing looks pretty good. It's got some kind of a, some kind of attachments here and here and up over there, perhaps for racks or something like that. And, uh, yeah. 
All right, so we I just found some guy who's got this cool app and he's measuring the length and height of this truck and the truck bed. I'm gonna to talk to him a minute and, and they're, they're gonna be estimates, but I'm curious about this rear view mirror. It's, uh, it's a borderless or frameless rear view mirror, but I gotta wonder if that's going to be, because I can't see how you'd be able to see out the back with that rear view mirror unless it was a camera based rear view mirror which I'm not sure if it is or not. Um, I know a lot of the vehicles I've seen online haven't had the mirror. I don't know if that's gonna be an option or not. Um, so we'll have to see. The center console, if I can get in there, you can see is, it's just, it, it, you got your cup holders there. Looks like you've got your I don't know, it's, it's tough to see. Maybe there's a wireless charging inside there. It does not appear that there's a center seat there. These are definitely bucket seats, and it looks like a normal sort of a uh, you know console there where you can store things inside there, open it up on a hinge. But, um, yeah. So my new friend Ewan here, he's got a an app that you can measure the distance or how big something is. So what did you, what did you measure up? Do you have like a summary of the? Yeah, so um, across the front, it's uh, nine feet, 11 inches. Nine feet, 11 inches. These are all, by the way, these, this is not official. Yeah. This is just you and using an app. Yeah. I don't know if you even paid money for this app or not. <laughs> but uh, now what did you say? It was 22, 22 and a half feet long. 22 and a half feet long. From nose to tail. And how high? Approximately six feet, right? Approximately six feet. Six feet high, all the way up to the up to the tip of the vehicle. And then, Ewan, did you measure the uh, did you measure the bed length itself? Yeah, the bed length is um, four foot ten. Four foot ten, and that's for, that's the actual bed length that so where the tonneau cover comes up. Okay. Okay. All right, so four foot 10 from here all the way down to there. Again, this is just a digital app that we're doing this. <laughs> not official, not official. Kind of good. There's a four foot three. What is that? What four measure? Four foot three. Cut around. So, okay, you're saying from the inside of the tonneau cover, you're saying four foot three? Yes. It looks a little bigger than that to me. Are you sure? Do, do that. Do that estimate again. Yeah, it looks around four foot five, but. All right, I don't so, think I'm getting so almost four and a half foot wide. Okay. Very cool. Well, Thank you so much for doing this. What's what's the number one motivation for you to to order one of these? Like, um, just the overall lifestyle. I mean, you know, you can put pretty much anything in the bag. You know, I have a son. I can put all the stuff in the bag. Right. You know, the, the the bed, the back seat, and it's like tons of space. And then the range too. Like, I own a Model Three now. Yeah. And the range might be like you know two hundred and forty miles. If this has actually five hundred miles. It's a game changer. You think this is going to have 500 miles? Even if it has 400, I'd be satisfied. Oh, yeah. I mean, I challenge that. Yeah. I don't I don't think you're going to have anything close to that. But, I mean, you know what? Range is somewhat important with yes. a Tesla. True. But the thing we got going for us as Tesla owners are it's the network, right? Exactly. You know, you True. got it all over the place. Absolutely. Yeah. The charging I, network, the charging infrastructure. Yeah. And do you, do you tow anything? No. no okay. No. Because this thing will tow supposedly 11,000 pounds. Yeah, they say 11,000. Some people say 14, but 11,000 sounds more uh, realistic. Yeah, that's what it says yeah. on the sign over there and all that. Yeah. Can't you know, wait. Well, listen, good good luck to you with your uh, – with your, and thank you so much oh, no problem. for doing those uh, measurements. Yeah, you're welcome. All you're right. Welcome. Well, listen, you, the, you're going to find this video on Out of Spec Dave. Okay. All right. And when you get delivery of your vehicle, you got to call me up. Because I right need – we, right we need to do a test drive. Oh, yeah. Or at least I gotta I gotta figure out how do you like it. Good luck to you, man. Thank you, man. Thank All you. All right. All right. So guys, listen. I've I've just met some super nice people over here that are Tesla owners and Tesla enthusiasts. What are your names? Victor. 
All right. I'm Carson. I'm with the uh, Tesla Owners Club of New York State, our regional organizer for the New York City Challenge. I'm also a member of the Tesla Owners Club of New York State. Oh, wow. And an enthusiast since 2012. Well, you guys let me in. I used to live in New York State. I mean, I'm a sure, Connecticut please. guy now, but, you know, I'd love to. Register your car here so you don't have to pay property taxes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, yeah, I, that's I, criminal. Or Jersey, you don't have to pay sales tax. Yeah, maybe tax. I'll register down my condo down in Florida, but that's a, <laughs> that's about the extent of it. Sorry, so guys, what do you think of this thing? Talk to me. Oh, it's great. It's so great. I saw it for the first time two years ago, right here in the same spot, and I had to sit in awe of it for hours and hours because it's alien. It's like unlike anything you've ever seen before. It took me hours to process what I was looking at it before my brain realized and processing. It's a truck. Yeah, yeah. So what are your thoughts about this rear view mirror inside the inside? You know, it's a frameless rear view mirror. But from the angle that I'm standing at right here, it doesn't appear as if you're going to be able to see anything out. So wh what are your thoughts about that? Do you think that's going to be a, an actual video screen inside the car? Well, speaking of angles, I like the angles on the actual mirror itself. It's nice and tight. It goes with the theme of the vehicle. I don't think it'll be a touchscreen, you know, smart mirror device. You know, you already have a massive uh, 13 to 15 inch center display there, which will have the rear camera view on uh, at all times. And also remember the side of Peter cameras you'll have access to. Uh, there's plenty of third party accessories that uh, where you can just snap it onto the existing center mirror of your car, that functionality. And I believe there should be uh, some viewing angle space when the tunnel cover is open. Okay. I want to say that, you know, the, the proportions are right now in comparison to the prototype that I'd seen a few, you know, a few years ago. Um, the fit and finish I'm impressed with um, based on previous launches. I am too. I just went over the entire vehicle, guys, and I'm like, I, everybody talks about panel gaps. Yeah. I think everybody's got to, like, lay off on the panel gaps because, first of all, who cares? I mean, seriously. I mean, unless it's crazy bad. Just take delivery and enjoy your vehicle. That's my opinion. But this one I went over, guys, it looked really good. Nice and sick, yeah. I could barely notice anything, you know, off-centered or anything, but even if it was, it's still a beautiful vehicle. I remember the one from a couple years ago still had the marks from when Franz took his sledgehammer. To oh, yeah. It still looked it still looked good to go. Yeah, my son Kyle was at that event, and <laughs> when they brought it out, I thought it was a joke. He was, he was like, Dad, this thing looks horrible he was like what is that and then it, then it started to grow on him quite honestly i've not liked it in the pictures it's growing on me here the longer i stay here all right so yep. what do you think are some hidden uh potential releases we're going to see on thursday november 30th at the uh, at the event what do you think that elon's got surprises for us i think yeah i think uh, the mickey could possibly be a surprise you know uh i've personally been living in my tesla model x for almost six years now so in order to live inside the cyber vault we're going to need an opening in there so the heat and air conditioning get in. We want the speakers to uh, pump in the surround sound back there. Be a deal breaker if I have to plug in an external heat or air conditioning back there. Okay. Well, what do you think? Any any surprises you're you're anticipating? I think pretty much that's it. There might be some things maybe in the interior, some additional use interior that they may surprise us with. Right. What do you think? What do you think the uh, price and the range is going to be, guys? I'd say 350 miles, they're going to come in at 55,000. You really think that low? Yeah. Wow. I think they're going to be within inflation prices of what they announced in 2019. So whatever the inflation rate was from 2019 today, they'll be within those prices. Wow. I personally think it's going to be much more expensive than that, but who knows? That's just me sort of guessing. I really, I can't see them coming in at that low. Don't forget tax credits and incentives as well. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you very much for your opinions. And uh, we'll, we'll see what happens on November 30th. But boy, is it nice to see this vehicle here today. That's great. Thank you. Thanks again. All right. So it's a great day here in the meatpacking district. I got my new friend over here. And behind him, he's got his car that he just showed up in. What a great day. Met some super nice people. Uh, the, the star of the show, though, of course, is is the Cybertruck, the CT. So I drove down from CT to see the CT, and I'm impressed. I'm not sure if I'd actually want to buy one of these things. I don't know. Uh, but I hope Kyle does, because then I can borrow it.